As we launch off the top into Luke Beveridge and the situation from last week. Caro, you were very strong at the time. You questioned his ability to coach young men. I want to revisit that in a moment. But first, some history. It wasn't Luke Beveridge's first run-in with a journalist or, or debate with members of the media. Let's take a look at some of the historical moments. Firstly, with Damien Barrett, the new Kane Corns, and then Damo again. You know, there were... At times, people too hard and too keen to scrutinise, to drag him down, and you probably know who they are. Um, one in particular, um, and that just shows just a, a sheer lack of conscience and and drive to be nasty, and and that that'll never be forgiven uh, by anyone at our football club. It's just a window into that person's soul and how black that soul is. And some of the ridiculous um, commentary and insinuations around Adam was just so distasteful from people. Like, if you're going to fail at something, don't fail at trying to pull people down, you know. I, I just don't know how people can you know, sleep next to people like that when they're so vindictive, and I, that was nasty. I was so happy to see him play well tonight. You rang me before the football show the night that you and Liam Pickering came on. Yeah, I did that. And... and yeah. Publicly had a, had a shot at me. Publicly had a shot at you well, by, by not, quoting Liam Pickering, saying well, he, that, that he you was, refused uh, to speak to his player. If journalists ring me, I don't, I don't ring them back to talk to them because I've got things going on in my life. Well, I, I can't call, call t- can't talk to the coach who won't speak to a player, and the coach is making accusations it's, about it's the player. Got and I've then got on record and on camera the, the manager of that player saying that you won't speak to him, and, and have already ruled against him. Why did you call me? Because you're the coach of the footy club yeah, making no, these allegations no against your player. Call me direct. They, they, they oh, go well, through I, the football I, club. I speak to a lot of coaches, Luke. Yeah, well, I, a lot of them. Well, I, I roll a little bit differently, mate. So the attack on Tom Morris wasn't his first rodeo. You could certainly say it was his biggest. And the apology, it must be said, the next day was contrite and honest. And a lot of people have moved on. But, Carol, I'm interested whether you've moved on. Because you, you put right on the agenda that you doubted his ability to coach and be fit of mind to coach young men. Well, let's just clarify, Craig. No one's actually criticising Luke Beveridge's coaching, game day coaching. He's a brilliant coach, we all agree that. He's coached to a grand final and a premiership. Um, a grand final as recently as last September. But I think there is serious concern, even now, as we sit here tonight around the football club, about Luke and whether he needs more support. It came out in the statement that they delivered on the Thursday evening, shortly the day after the Tom Morris incident. Um, Meet Baines was at his house early that morning and they thrashed it out early. Kylie Watson Wheeler, the chairman, was involved. There is an acknowledgement from the club now that there has to be a, a recalibration of the support around Luke, what, what because clearly he hasn't been coping. It means that well, it, it, they've lost a lot of um, heavy experience in the coaches in the coaches box. Ashley Hanson and Stephen King, too, who come to mind, gone from last year, more from the year before. Um, there's a view that. These days, it just doesn't exist at many football clubs. The five, ten years ago, men like Neil Baum and Jeff Walsh and Andrew Ireland, back when he was a footy manager, there are still some strong footy managers at, at footy clubs. I mean, Chris Davies is one. No one's criticising Chris Grant, but does he challenge Luke Beveridge enough? There have there been signs all summer that this something was festering here. Um, Luke, last year, more than a year ago, quit the Coaches Association, was inducted the other night to AFL Life membership and yet made it clear to everyone there that he wouldn't be attending the catch-up with Gillan McLaughlin and his team when the coaches met the following morning. This is... It's not the 1000 or 1200 bucks you pay to be a member. It's this isolationist view. And we, we saw it in those clips tonight. The man has no, clearly no concept of how to deal with the media or how the media works. I mean, to hear him say, I roll differently, you don't ring me. Senior journos win coaches all the time. So he doesn't cope with the media, he doesn't understand the media. But the sort of the closed training sessions, even though the club say it wasn't Marcus Bontem, it wasn't Luke Beveridge's insistence on this, Marcus Bontempelli being the only captain in Victoria who wasn't prepared to leave a main training session to go to the captain's morning and only came later after training. All these little signs and some, I mean, I think you yourself have, um, and it hasn't been dropped yet, but you, you've even talked about his physical appearance. Do you think that the moustache well, is a good idea? Well, to be clear, not physical idea. appearance. Far better for me to talk about physical appearance. But <laughs> I just think the moustache is a bad look. And I know everyone will think that's uh, shallow. But when you are in the optics business, as a senior coach is, and you are looking to present yourself as put together, in control, in the driver's seat, rebounding from a runner's-up position, to, your summer look's got to go by round one. I'm sorry. It's not... 
it just undermines his um, ability to communicate. And it's not, it's a little thing, but it's, I think it's a, a series of those little things. Were you Let, too hard on the suggestion that he not... I think he needs help to be capable to do the job. And the club is admitting that. Now, I'm not saying he needs psychiatric help. Don't exaggerate this. I think he needs more support around him. I was disappointed he didn't pay the $20,000 fine or donation to charity. The club, I gather, believe he... now, believe now that they should have seen this coming with Luke and, as a result, have been prepared to wear the money, wear the fine. He did, didn't... He did didn't... he apologise? Not personally to Tom Morris, no, he didn't. And I, and I think whatever you say about Tom Morris and what has hap happened subsequently is really irrelevant to the attack that night. And for, on behalf of every young journalist in the game, I think that he needs to apologise. Why would you go into footy journalism if you're going to be treated like that when you break a really good story? Do you think he'll be coached this time next year? Oh, look, I, I can't answer that question. I hope now the club do a lot to... For, I mean, clearly he's a brilliant coach, I've said that, but there is a view he needs more help. The club now acknowledge that and we'll see if they reap the benefits by putting that extra help around him. He will, Kano. I, I think he will be. And I think that there's a difference between... All those things you said are right. I think uh, getting people around him um, to control him in those situations, I think you're right. But that's very different to coaching young men. So I don't think that affects the players at all. Yes, the great yes. coaches are a bit different, aren't they? Yeah, I think yeah. they are. Oh, I yeah, think, and, I think and the club have this view that every every successful club, a lot of them have clubs close to the edge. But, Craig, you know, I mean, you've seen coaches put under huge pressure in recent weeks and not respond like that. It, is, it was a it wrong, ridiculous He got it horribly wrong and it might pull him right back and we might see a different Luke Beveridge as a result of the fallout from it. And Hutchie, I think it's, a again, like you, a moustache... He, he's, if he was wearing a moustache in the grand final last year, you wouldn't have said anything. It's amazing when you do something yeah, no, wrong I, and you have a bad performance. I, I suddenly, would, we... I would think my view would be no, shared no, but, by two percent of people. Yeah, but you're picking but up. It's amazing how we pick holes in people when suddenly things aren't going right. But no, no, no. We we talked about last week on this. I'm show, talking about the moustache. The pre-season delivery. I thought that I talked Max about. Too. No, no, yeah, yeah. Matthew. Uh, I don't have a huge opinion on that, but this is a conversation that's been had at more senior levels of footy than just Craig Hutchison. Yeah. Trust what, me. About his moustache. Well, it, it just what it signifies about what else is going on in his life. Obviously, again, I'm not one to be talking about appearances either, but and it shouldn't be an issue, but he is presenting the football club and he presented them in a bad light. You say the players all love him. Um, you know, I'm let's not just... saying they love him, but I think you said, is he fit to still I don't coach think, 40 I don't young th men? He has not clearly coped well with that grand final loss. And the overreaction we saw last night is not coming out of the blue. The club were concerned, saw signs, and now really need to address it. And the next day, it inadvertently triggered a serious story that had significant consequences for our industry. And our thoughts are with uh, Meg Barnard and her statement on the weekend reflected her view of the world after Tom Morris and the leaked audio, which is one of two pieces of... Uh, leaked media that cost Tom his job. Uh, Meg went on to say the Fox Sports reporter, and this, these are her words on her Instagram, coming out as a process and should never be taken out of someone's hands, nor should anyone be spoken about in such a degrading manner. I hope my experience can be a catalyst for change in not just the sports industry, but in every industry. Uh, we've all felt for Meg in the situation she was put can in. I, I, I'm shattered for Meg, and I think she's the, the person out of this that we feel most for, of course, but why, when Tom, Tom delivered that to his friends in December and then March, the day after the Luke Beveridge the day, uh, yeah. press conference happens, this is released. So has someone held that? Is, who holds on to this and decides, I'm going to drop it the day Tom's in the news and it's probably coming out the better than what Luke Beveridge was looking at. Well, didn't, didn't News Limited have um, the Tim Payne pictures for four years? Mm. And, and every summer it, there, were, there was conversations and threats, or I don't know mm. what, but then it finally came out. Terribly, clearly not coincidental, mm. uh, Matthew. Uh, yeah. Clearly not I mean, coincidental. Look, I just want to say... As how, do you, a woman, how do you feel about it? Well, as a woman in the industry, and, and one of the more senior ones, and my very established and respected colleague Kelly Underwood who would understand more about what it was like for Megan than anyone wrote a really good column about this over the weekend and I urge you all to read it um, and she talks about her relationship with Megan I'm sure that Megan is being well supported by people like Kelly Underwood but for me it was in many ways a triumphant day 
because Fox Footy didn't take even all day to release a decision or a statement. And, you know, obviously Tom Morris has been a colleague and a friend of mine. I know his family well. I have enormous respect for his father, who supported me over the, that dreadful Sam Newman incident, wrote me a wonderful letter, did Tom Morris's dad, just a separate incident. But I, I've never seen a media organisation act so swiftly and so decisively. And I can tell you, every woman at Fox Footy was pretty were quite stunned by that and walked a little taller as a result. They, they did the, the right thing and the only thing. They've done a really strong job of um, building a great culture around their female on air and off air staff, and I thought it was the only action they could. They, take. they did, particularly yeah. because, particularly because the issue of sexuality is now such a big issue with the AFLW coming into the scene and and all the women who would have been so shattered by those but comments. Would you that Tom would you made. work with Tom moving forward? Would you, would you oh, work I, next to him if he sat here now? Well, I, I, he clearly would not be here now. But I do believe that he can come back from this. I think there's a lot of work that he has to do to come back from it. But I said last year I found it hard to think of Tex Walker playing against Indigenous players. He's playing in round three. You know, R Wayne Carey, he, he works as a senior commentator on TV. And I told Channel 9 I wouldn't work with him after one particular did, incident. It did make you feel sick. And it, insides like those of Kelly really ring home. It's, it's on all of us to not walk past that mm. type of behaviour. But I'm with you. I hope it's not. But your, your key point. I mean, I, I got smashed in, in a disgusting way by the footy show at times. But I w at least I was having strong opinions. I mean, Megan Barnard's done absolutely nothing, yeah. and and she has been inadvertently outed by some scumbag who decided that they wanted to bring down Tom Morris and stick up for Luke Beveridge. It just seems too coincidental. Otherwise, yeah, I'm sure we haven't heard the last of it. But to your point, maybe there's a, a slight silver lining in in, in uh, the way it's been handled uh, on the back of it, albeit in a horrible situation.